New dash cam day. I uh, got my hands on the Rexing V3, which previously I had the V1P Pro that Rexing has, which the V1P Pro, it's a forward facing camera and there's a rear mount camera for the back of the vehicle. Uh, I never installed the back, the back camera just because it's a little bit of a pain. Uh, so if you're looking for a rear facing camera that is much easier to install, which this might be a good option for you because it has a dual camera built right in, one forward, one rear. So not only do you get rear facing, but you also get passenger. So this would be something that's great for like uh, ride shares, cab drivers, or just absolutely anyone who doesn't want to have to run wiring for a rear facing camera, but would want some. So in the box, you obviously have the cigarette lighter adapter, the camera itself, which here's the rear facing camera, this nice big display, your buttons to control your options and settings and everything are underneath here. It's similar to all of the other Rexing cameras, power, uh, menu, uh, selection, and OK. Uh, you, this is the front of the camera, your forward facing one, and your SD card goes right in the top. And that's, uh, that's about it. It comes with, you know, the standard, the obviously your cigarette lighter adapter, you get a, this one to connect to a computer. They give you two of these mounts. I already have it in, one installed, so there's only one in the packaging. These clips for routing the wiring and some pamphlets, which is nice because they give you the chance to win the smart hardwire kit, which I like the hardwiring. They also, uh, they, for reviews, they'll give you a free SD card. The one thing that I forgot that they gave me is this trim tool for helping you get the wiring tucked behind your trim pieces in the interior. It's pretty awesome that they give you this. I like Rexing a lot. They have great customer service. So let's get this installed and uh, see how it is. These are the features that the camera has. Um, it's got a 2.7 inch screen. Obviously it's a wide angle so it'll get all the action that's happening on the road in front of you. Uh, it is HD. Both cameras will record simultaneously 1080p. If you're only going to use the front channel, it'll record a little bit higher quality than uh, 1080. I think it's 1440. It may go up to 4K. We will take a look once it's in, once we have it in the, in the car. It does have loop recording, so it'll continuously record, and then any files that are not protected, it'll then just record over those. It's temperature resistant, so it'll withstand your, you know, extreme hots, extreme colds, built-in Wi-Fi, you can connect to your phone, instantly review files on your phone or control recording from your phone. Uh, it has a G sensor, so it'll, if it, if it senses any form of drastic motion, it'll automatically lock the files. It's got a super capacitor as opposed to a battery, so I know with a lot of the older dash cams, the ones that had batteries, basically, you would leave it plugged in, the battery would die, and then the camera would start acting wonky. This isn't going to do that. This is going to be super reliable long term. Your dual channels, obviously, what we already discussed, forward and rear facing, and GPS logger that'll give you your coordinates at the time of an incident as well as your speed. For installation, you have two options. They give you the adapter to plug into the cigarette lighter, which depending on where your cigarette lighter is located, will determine how you route your wiring up to the dash cam. But for me, my cigarette lighter is right here. So basically, if I were to go with that option, I would plug it in there, probably run the wire down here, get it underneath this trim, use the, use the pry tool that they give you in the in the packaging run it up along here get it up with that wiring back there bring it around here to this trim and then just tuck it in with the trim tool that they give you up there behind this pillar right here and then tuck it in behind the headliner and down down here and then out to the camera. So hardwiring is a very simple solution. You get the hardwire kit from Rexing and one of these little add a fuses. So it, what this does is it'll remove one of the fuses that you have and give you a second option for a fuse. You obviously want to find something that has constant power so that 
when you shut the car off that could still run when you're parked. What I did is, speaking of the cigarette lighter, I used the cigarette lighter circuit because I know that in my car, the cigarette lighter circuit perpetually has power whether the ignition is on or off. Not all cars are that way, so find out. Before, while choosing a fuse, just make sure it's one that has constant power. So you'll need the add a fuse, which is this piece, up to this blue connector here, right? And then this is the wiring that goes on from the hardwire kit. I believe this camera calls for something that's five volts, one and a half amps, so make sure you match that in the hardwire kit that you get. Rexing's kit will be what you need. So you just have the power wire that goes into the add fuse and then the ground that you need to get to a ground point, which I'm lucky enough to have one right there. Then when you're done, you can just take all this, tuck it behind the dash, and it's out of sight, out of mind, and you can put your fuse panel cover back on. Easy peasy. Now, all you gotta do, super clean, you wouldn't even know. Now, all you gotta do is with the wire, and this is the way that I did mine, is bring it up out of the fuse panel and get it in this crack and tuck it and run it along this A-pillar. And just tuck it back there, they give you the tool in the box with the camera, and then again, tuck it along in the headliner here. And then if you have a little plastic trim piece like this, you just grab it and pull it and it pops right off and you can put your wires right down in there and then run them down. And what I did was I just got a drill bit that it's gonna be tough to see with the sun glare. But what I did was I just got a drill bit and in the very edge of that, I just put a hole just big enough to pull the wire through. So the wire is completely in there, super clean, and then it comes right here. So now we'll get the new camera on the window set up and we will begin using it and figure out how it works. I use the same wire that I was previously using for the V1P because it's hardwired, it's the same voltage and amperage, so it was nice and easy for me. Basically, you wanna you know, turn the camera on, put it in position on the windshield so that it's not getting a view of your rear view mirror and it has a good view of the cabin as well as facing forward. So, and you could, you know, you could just use the selector when it's not recording, you can use the selector buttons right here to change your view. So that's forward facing with inside in the corner. No, I'm sorry, it's difficult to see with the sun glare. You could hit it again. That'll just give you interior with um, outside in the picture in picture. Hit it again, that's just forward facing. That's just interior. My phone is just blocking the camera right now. That's forward facing, interior, picture in picture. That's interior with forward facing picture in picture. I'm probably gonna run it with forward facing with interior picture in picture. That's how I will use it. So I love the ease of use of the menu items. I love how sleek the install is. So right now this is me sitting in the driver's seat. Look over to the mirror. It's kind of nice and hidden behind the mirror, but not completely hidden. I could still see from my line of sight the camera. I could still reach the lock button because you use the OK button while recording to lock. And uh, and I'm. It's got a perfectly good view of me on screen. Also, from the outside, it's pretty discreet. It's nice and slim. Nah, it's gonna make you feel something. The rap calls Queen and Slim. Thought provoking, profound, and deeply affecting. Queen and Slim. In theaters Wednesday. Read it all. Under 17, out of middle that parent. Directed by Melina Mitsukas. That Mitsukas. sucks. That guy just hit that deer. The deer is still alive and drooling. And that, that cop's gotta shoot that deer right now. After using the V3 for like two weeks now, I do really like it. I'll probably use it primarily as opposed to the V1P. I think I'm going to move that into my secondary vehicle and use this in the primary vehicle. Um, I don't really have any complaints. The quality is good. The, the audio is good. 
everything syncs up real nicely. It makes it super easy to edit and between the interior versus exterior uh, videos, you could access everything right on your phone instantly, which is really awesome. Um, the one thing that I wish Rexing would do that another manufacturer I know does is when you lock the file, it'll put a timestamp in the corner of the picture of exactly where the file was locked, which makes things super simple for finding where it is that things happen. That's literally the only thing that I wish they would do. Otherwise, I could not be happier. I'll put links in the description for the camera, the hardwire kit, and anything else needed for install, as well as like the Adafuse. If you guys are looking for a dash cam with dual channel forward and rear facing and don't want to run one, like a rear facing camera to the rear of the vehicle, um, this is a really good option for you.